Oh, taste and see the goodness of God that allows us to welcome this new day shining with the rays of his love. Be grateful because what God has given us far exceeds our imagination and our expectation. On behalf of this ministry team, I bid you an amazing morning, brothers and sisters, while you feel the warmth of God's love. In doing so, enjoy this song entitled Above All, as well by singer Lenny LeBlanc. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what
Almighty God, we are grateful to have you as our Father. You continue to bestow your love and protection upon us each and every day. There is none like you who would have sacrificed their only son for others like you did for us, who would have laid down their life for us if it wasn't for your faithful love and mercy for us, we will all be lost. We are to give you all the praise and honor from our lips. The songwriter expressed his words very well in this song. You are above all powers, above all kings above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. You are above all wealth and treasures of the earth. And there is no way to measure what you are worth. He goes on to say, you were crucified and laid behind a stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone. You were trampled on like a rose upon the ground. And yes, you took the fall and thought of me above all. You could have changed your mind, Father God. But you didn't because of us. We thank you with a grateful heart in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we continue reading Paul's letter to the Romans, notice how he points out that living by the Spirit makes us sons and daughters of God. Then compares suffering that we face in this life with the glory that will be revealed in us. In verse 18, he entreats us to wait patiently and to trust that the Spirit intercedes for us when we don't know what to pray. Now kindly pay attention to the epistle of Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 39 which will be read by Sister Denise Duzon. Here begins the reading. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies as through his spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, 
we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, but not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good. For those who love God. Who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any change against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you for the wonderful words of your wisdom in scripture.
May we become so firmly grounded in the truth of your word and the glory that it reveals. That we can place the sufferings um, of this present time in their correct perspective. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It brings me great pleasure to welcome the speaker who will bring us the reflection as God has laid on her heart for today. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Leona Patrick Gibbs, a member of the Cold Bay Methodist Church. My meditation today is focused on verses 28 and 27 of Romans chapter 8. And the theme, we are more than conquerors, the test of timing. We are God's children, so we can have the assurance that he will always have our best interests at heart. Even when we are facing trials, we can have the assurance that God is right there with us. We should be mindful that our trials are being used to shape us and not to break us. As parents, don't we sometimes allow our children to go through situations because we want them to build character? Likewise, God allows us to go through trials to build our character and to aid, enable us to be drawn closer to him and trust and honor him. To remind us that he is able to bring us through every situation. When things don't go as planned, seek God for the answer. For as verse 28a says, in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Listen to a story of two missionaries. Scott and Margaret were thrilled when they were invited to travel to Tanzania on a summer outreach. Both felt a missionary calling to Tanzania and they had been looking for an opportunity to go there. However, when the leader learned that Margaret was pregnant, he strongly discouraged them from going. This was confusing and disappointing setback for the couple. But when Margaret and Scott later came to appreciate God's wisdom, when there were complications with the pregnancy, they were on the right track, but their timing was off. One year later, they landed in Tanzania with a healthy baby boy and stayed for four fruitful years. My brothers and sisters, what sometimes feels like a painful thwarting of our dreams may actually be God holding us back in his infinite wisdom. God's timing is perfect and he never makes mistakes in accomplishing his purposes through us and in us. Have your plans been put on hold? Pray that God will give you his perspective. Let us pray. God, in your wisdom, give us the understanding to see you at work in all situations in our life and to use the obstacles before us as stepping stones in order to accomplish that which you have set aside for us. Amen. I thank you, Sister Leona, for sharing your thoughts on chapter 8 this morning and trust that it will make a difference to other lives. And now the benediction. The blessing is a sign of God's abiding love for us, a reminder of all that gives us peace. May the grace of the Lord in Jesus Christ be with you, Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, friends and followers, if you are blessed by this program, I encourage you to share it with others. You can also find us on YouTube and Facebook on the Methodist Church St. Martin Circuit page.
one of me.